scripture reading this evening comes from the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, selected verses. Our scripture lesson begins just after the Israelites have received the Ten Commandments from God. So that's where we're picking up, and as we read, I want you to notice two things. First, following God's rules brings promised blessing. And two, Parents play an important part in modeling and teaching those rules to their children. Scripture reads, Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God has charged me to teach you, so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength or might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. was preparing the sermon, I thought about who this sermon is for. And the first thing that came to my mind is that this sermon is for weary parents who behind closed doors feel like their children are running the household. I also thought that this, this sermon is for emboldened parents whose children have gotten burned in some way, shape, or form by the current culture and who are unafraid to chart a different course for their families. I thought that this sermon, thirdly, is for searching parents who recognize what is at stake in our culture today, but who are looking for finite, concrete steps that they can take to ensure the success of their children in life. Statistically speaking, none of these parents are alone. But I think that this sermon is also for concerned people of faith. 
people who understand the struggles that parents are facing today and how they spill into a wider cultural war that you most certainly are facing too. So in short, this sermon is for everyone. This past week, I had the honor of sitting down with the New York Times best-selling parenting author, Dr. Leonard Sachs, for my show Through Central, Chaos to Calm. And I asked him a variety of questions based upon his newest book, The Collapse of Parenting. How we hurt our kids when we treat them like grown-ups. My sermon will not only present the background of Dr. Sachs and his findings, but I'm also going to bring in a faith response to his work. And together, those things are going to provide us with three concrete steps that we can take to improve parenting and our lives in honor of our Book and a Bible sermon series for this contemporary service. You know, as I was reflecting, I first heard Dr. Sachs a few years ago, and he was speaking at my children's school. And he was saying some pretty provocative things, but things that have continued to stay with me. First, he was warning parents, particularly parents of boys, about the dangers of violent video games. He suggested a couple, Halo and Grand Theft Auto. And he said that, in fact, these specific games have statistically been tied to the moral degradation of their developing character. He also commented about the injurious effects of social media, particularly on developing adolescent girls. He believes that they can suffer serious self-esteem issues because of it. But in the collapse of parenting, Dr. Sachs expands his reach to comment on the whole enterprise of parenting itself. And I will suggest to you that he has exactly the background to do it. Not only is he a father to a daughter himself, but his book is based on over 90,000 office visits as a board-certified family physician. This guy is so smart, he earned his undergraduate from MIT, he went on to get his MD and a PhD in psychology from the University of Pennsylvania, and he is a syndicated speaker who travels around the world talking with parents, children, and school administrators on a path to compile the data that he presents in his book. He's also appeared on numerous national media sites and outlets. And he's the author of several research-based parenting books. Friends, his experience and his research have led him to one conclusion, that we are witnessing the full-blown collapse of parenting in society today. And the symptoms of this collapse, he believes, are diverse and widespread, but unfortunately are particularly pronounced in America. For instance, children are becoming increasingly obese and out of shape. They have poor sleep habits and are overscheduled. As a result, their anxiety and depression are on the rise, and so is their medication rate, which is higher in America than in any other country. Simultaneously, American schools are slipping in worldwide rankings, and school dropout rates and joblessness are increasing. In other words, we're in trouble. This montage of symptoms is concerning at best, but when it's presented via Dr. Sachs's methodical documentation of these claims, it is outright alarming. But the good news is, there's something we can do about it. Luckily, he proposes valuable troubleshooting advice, and I have condensed that research into three steps which have faith resonances. And the first is his admonition that parents must reclaim their authority. He explains how the primary role of parents throughout 
history has been to enculturate our children. And that's why today children often live with parents until they are 18. Parents are deeply involved and invested in the task of communicating and transmitting culture and value to their children. And this is no small task. But unfortunately, this intergenerational link is becoming short-circuited in our society today. Instead of looking to parents for instruction. Children are increasingly drawn to same age peer approval. Social media is a big driver of this change along with less quality time spent with parents and children due to overscheduling and increased screen time, for instance. The result has been a culture of disrespect among American youth. Instead of authority being honored, it is popularly being dismissed. And unfortunately, this change is largely going unchallenged. Dr. Sachs has observed parents in his practice who are often uncomfortable wielding authority for fear of upsetting their children or making a mistake themselves. The, com the parental command has been replaced by a question. Hear that again. The parental command has been replaced by a question. Dr. Sachs believes in our society today. And subsequently, children's whims are often catered to, and finite boundaries which safeguard their ultimate well-being are not being drawn. And at the same time, there is less parental enforcement at home. Schools are less inclined to teach values than they were generations ago. So you can see that there's almost a double-headed threat, but I think this threat actually extends into faith-based authority as well, which is often denigrated or dismissed by society too. So what I'm suggesting to you is that there is actually a vacuum of authority that is causing many of the symptoms that Dr. Sachs is observing in his practice and seeing in his research. Dr. Sachs urges parents to adopt instead just right parenting. Parenting that is neither too permissive nor too strict. The trick, he says, is to be both strict and loving, which may feel like an oxymoron, particularly in our time. But the truth is that children can't receive instruction unless there's the foundation of love and a relationship. But they also benefit most from concrete and definitive boundaries in order to thrive. And this is not only true in the home or in the classroom, but it's a principle of scripture. As you heard me allude to in the children's message this evening. In the Old Testament, God gave the people the Torah or the law. It was filled with definitive and, and very clear boundaries that they were to follow so that they would be blessed and they would have a better life. And not only was this communicated to the people, but parents had a very particular responsibility when these laws were communicated. It was every parent's job to teach these rules to their kids. And scripture uses the word that's often translated to inscribe this law upon their children's hearts. And sometimes you'll hear people say to teach these commandments, but Dr. Sachs actually takes up this very passage and he says, you know, teaching, teaching is too watered down. The Hebrew word to inscribe actually has more to do with cutting like a knife in the heart. Parental authority gets a biblical exclamation point in scripture. It is vital to God's understanding of our important role as parents to help our children mature. Recognizing the prevalent culture of disrespect and reasserting authority is step one. But the next step to healing the collapse 
is to redefine success for our children. Dr. Sachs observes that parenting today often errs on the side of preparing children for more school rather than succeeding in life, and the two are actually different. Children are not living, he argues, so much as they are performing, putting on a show to impress the college admissions office, he says. And the focus on children's ability to perform and to resume pad actually results in a warped and fragile sense of self-worth. Further, it creates such frenzied schedules that there is little time for parents to reframe this danger, and as a result, fear begins to dictate the terms. Children are increasingly becoming less risk-averse, or more risk-averse, rather, and they're becoming less creatively minded, and I'd like to suggest to you that creativity and being willing to take on healthy risk are two factors that are essential to life success, are they not? Dr. Sachs encourages parents to follow the natural trajectory of culture's prevalent plan. After all, if going to a good school is the goal, we know that that does not ensure a child's happiness. And if achieving the new American dream of fame and fortune is its goal, if we're honest, we know that that doesn't ensure true fulfillment in a person. In fact, New York Times columnist David Brooks argues that tying the American dream of fame and fortune to fulfillment is the central illusion of our time. American youth, in other words, are being raised in a culture whose goal is an illusion and that encourages the immediate gratification of its impulses. Dr. Sachs has a lot to say about that, but it's effectively maybe best symbolized in Pepsi's live for now mantra. In short, children are on a race to nowhere. And they are in desperate need, whether they know it or not, for parents and people of faith to reset the terms. Dr. Sachs wants parents to counter culture by illustrating what true success can look like for a child. And for that, he writes, you must help your child find meaning in life that is not about their latest accomplishment or how they look or how many friends they have, but about who your child is, their truest self. You must judge success as a parent not by how many friends your child has, not by their grade point average or test scores or athletic prowess, not by an acceptance letter from a famous college or university, but by whether your child is on the road to fulfillment, capable of governing his or her needs and desires instead of being governed by them. This is something that parents can do. But I would like to suggest to you that it can best be done through the eyes of faith. Faith not only offers healthy, God-given instruction, as our scripture passage stated, but it also offers us an eternal measure for defining true success. Undergirding scripture's eternal measure of true success is the importance of developing the character or the soul of a person. And we see that through Paul's discussion of the fruits of the Spirit, for instance, in the New Testament. Paul is talking about the fruits of character development. And growing in these important fruits illustrates the theological fancy uh, topic of sanctification. Sanctification. According to Galatians chapter 5, verses 2 through 22 through 23, those fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Interestingly, Dr. Sachs says that self-control is a really, really important one. In fact, when he's combed through studies asking the question, what is the single most determining factor of a child's future fulfillment and success in life, that answer was their ability to self-control. Well, Dr. Sachs's argument in the book is not theological. Its premise is, after all, self-control is about integrity. It's about not the immediate gratification of our impulses, but about perseverance and working hard for a higher goal. It's the character development that we see God offering us through the rules or laws in the Old Testament. It's the result of the fruits of the Spirit that we read Paul describing in the New Testament. And fortunately, it is something that parents can teach. The third step to healing the collapse of parenting today is to reinstigate or to beef up our concern for character development in children. Dr. Sachs says that this is something that can be done, but it has to be done through dedication and careful attention. And the first thing, the bedrock of it, is to protect family time. Remember how I said that children can receive our instruction, but they can best receive it when there's love and there's a relationship. And friends, we just have to make time for those relationships to happen. Whether they're with parents, whether they're with extended family, whether they're with someone from this church who can mentor. Those kinds of things can be lifelines for a developing character. Dr. Sachs encourages backyard play. He encourages protecting vacation time amidst sports schedules. And he talks specifically about the importance of regular meal time as families. In fact, with every meal added per week, there is an additional benefit to the child. Statistically speaking, that blows my mind. But what we're doing is we're flexing that communication muscle between parent and child so that it exists and it is powerful when they do come for advice. Second, Dr. Sachs encourages parents to teach their children humility. Humility. And he says humility because he's confident that they're not going to learn it in our live for now culture. Our live for now culture that is saturated with social media and what some would say self-aggrandizement. But humility instead is a step toward responsibility and grounding. And one way he suggests that we can grow humility is by instigating regular household chores. But thirdly, Dr. Sachs says that parents can indeed lay the bedrock of self-control with their children by implementing consistent natural consequences so that self-control becomes a habit or a character trait in the child. And I was curious as to how exactly he would suggest to do this and he gives two examples. To an eight-year-old to build self-control he says no dessert until you eat your vegetables which as a doctor he sees a lot of kids who actually aren't eating their vegetables today. Um, but to a teenager, he says to build self-control, you can say no TV or internet or video games until after you've done your homework. These are simple steps to build an important character muscle. To be sure, building character in children is a process that takes dedication and careful attention, but it's really important to remember that children aren't only going to listen to what we say, what we teach, they're going to watch all the time what we do. And with that, Dr. Sachs reminds us that not only can we model healthy perseverance and self-control for our children in our own lives, but we can also model unconditional love.
And you see, that's the thing that this culture of disrespect and this quest for same age peer approval can't provide. Because we all know that peer approval can be contingent and fickle. That makes the care that parents can provide children absolutely essential and underlines the importance of everything that Dr. Sachs is arguing to protect that bond. And while parents are indeed in the position to challenge the crisis that Dr. Sachs observes, faith is also able. After all, the most perfect example of unconditional love and the most perfect example of instruction is God. And that ability to tap into those divine resources will not only serve as an additional lifeline for our children, but it can serve as an additional lifeline to us as people of faith or as parents. So as we consider ways that we can reassert our authority or beef it up, so to speak, as parents, as we think about ways that we can redefine culture's understanding of success as concerned people of faith, and as we look to implement a plan to build lasting happiness in children through the important character development steps. I also hope that we think about ways that we can make our hearts more tender to the authority of God in our lives. Amen. thank you that you've fed us here at this table. We thank you that you have drawn us together as a community of faith. And we thank you that we can count on you being present in the hands of friends so that we are never alone, but that we can join hands with others and serve you and help our families to grow our communities to be more and more the people you call us to be. Through Christ we pray. Amen.